Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma la. Ahabatulfillah, it's very important for us to prepare ourselves for the holy month of Ramadan. As Ramadan is steadily approaching. So we have to make sure that we know some of the ahkam, some of the rulings of Ramadan, the manners of Ramadan. And so that way we can gain the most out of Ramadan because knowledge precedes action. As Imam Bukhari said in, 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 uh, in Sahih Bukhari, Bab al-ilmu qabla al-qawli wal-amal or babun al uh, babun la uh, bab al ilm qabla al qawli wal amal now the chapter of knowledge precedes actions so that way the more knowledge we have or the fact that we should have knowledge of whatever we do in our ibadah this is conditional for our ibadah we have to know why we're doing it. And we have to know how to do it properly. The Prophet said, Man bihi Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the deen. That's a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a person. If he, he gives him or her knowledge of the deen. Helps them know more about their religion and practice it. Coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that is the means to come close to Allah Azza wa Jalla. And as the holy month of Ramadan, it's the, it's the month of the Qur'an. So we should busy ourselves with the Qur'an. Strive our best to get the Qur'an back in our lives. And even read some tafsir. You know, so that we, we understand the meanings of what we're reciting, what we're trying to memorize. And it's a time for dhikr and maghfirah and seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's a time to remember Allah as much as possible if you're going to the masjid all the way to the masjid on the way back to the masjid going to work doing whatever activity you're doing try to make a dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use that time Ramadan's a time to clean ourselves to purify ourselves and to have taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba aladina min qablakum la'allakum tattakum Allah has written or prescribed for you fasting like he prescribed for those who came before you in order that you may have taqwa. So the maqasid or maqsad of Ramadan, the intent of Ramadan is to gain taqwa, to increase our taqwa, to increase our iman. And taqwa, as some of the scholars mention, taqwa refers to following the commands of Allah and avoiding His prohibitions. Following the commands of Allah, meaning the orders that Allah has given you in the Quran and in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet and avoiding those things which Allah has prohibited you from. That's taqwa. So the more we, if we fast and we gain the true benefit of our fasting, it will increase our taqwa. You know, it will bring us closer to Allah. And also we want to gain, gain that momentum to not just fast Ramadan, to after Ramadan, also fast, but also continue on that, that iman, because you feel good when you're gaining benefit in Ramadan, you feel that closer to Allah when you, you're not distracted by food. You're not distracted by third, uh, uh, you know, drinking and eating in your day. You can benefit from your day more as long as you're not one of those people who sleep. Because unfortunately, many people, they sleep the whole day and then they break their fast. Unfortunately, that is a habit in many places. And so they don't gain the benefit of Ramadan. For them, they slept, just had a good sleep, especially if they had a vacation, and then they wake up and they break their fast. And then they eat. Some people, there's a lot of people, unfortunately, they gain a lot of weight during Ramadan. The opposite. The opposite of, uh, of really what a person would generally be doing, because Ramadan is teaching us restraint. The Prophet said, 
in a hadith Akhraju Tirmidhi wa ibn Majah wa ibn Hibban Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Iza kana awla layla min shah Ramadan Sufidat al-shayateen wa maradat al-jinn wa ghulikat wa ghulikat abwaab al-nar falam yuftah minha babin wa futihat abwaab al-jinnah فَلَمْ يُغْلِقْ مِنْهَا بَابًا وَيُنَادِ مُنَادِ كُلُّ اللَّيْلَةِ يَا بَغِيَ الْخَيْرِ أَقْبَرْ وَيَا بَغِيَ الْشَرْ أَقْصَرْ وَلِلَّهِ اتْقَى مِنَ النَّارِ وَذَلِكَ كُلُّ اللَّيْلَةِ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that if it is the first night of Ramadan from the first night of Ramadan or the beginning of Ramadan the shayateen are chained they're chained alhamdulillah or they're shackled and the wicked jinn as well and the the doors of the fire are closed, they're locked. Ghulikat abwabanna. The doors of, of the hellfire are locked. And one not one of the bats will open or be opened. And the doors of Jannah are open and not one of them will be closed. And there will be a caller who calls every night in Ramadan who says, Oh, you who want good, you know, do good. Accept the khayr, do, do good. And oh, you who does evil, you, you know, you, you are, uh, you're, you gain no benefit. And Allah will free or allow, you know, through your ibadah, free you or distance you from the fire. And in another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Attakum shahar Ramadan, shahar Mubarak. Faradallahu alaykum siyamu. Wa tuftahu fihi abwaab as sama وتغلق فيه أبواب الجحيم وتغل فيه مرضة الشياطين وفيه ليلة هي خير من ألف شهر ألف شهر من حرم خيرها فقد حرم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in a hadith أخرجه النساء وأحمد وبيهقي which means very similar to the hadith we already mentioned. That when the month of Ramadan comes to you, the blessed month, Allah has made it an obligation upon you to fast. So we know the obligation of fasting in Ramadan. And he opens the doors of the heavens and closes the door of the hellfire and shackles the wicked shayateen or the accursed shayateen. And there is a night which is better than a thousand months, meaning the Laylat al-Qadr. Whoever is prohibited from its khair, then they have been prohibited. That's because they didn't strive. They didn't strive to, to gain the benefit out of their Ramadan and, and, and make Qiyam al-Layl and try to... Uh, be of those standing in Qiyam on the night of power. So, we don't want to miss that khair. And there are many other hadith which mention that, that the shayateen are shackled. And I recall reading one of the ulama, or some of the ulama, they say, in an explanation of Sahih Muslim, by one of... Uh, Sheikh Mubarak Furi, I believe, 
And he mentioned that perhaps the minor shayateen, and I believe I could be mistaken, but uh, if it was from him, but that the minor shayateen are still there. We know our nefs are still there. So then it's on you, because the major shayateen for sure are shackled. So it's up to you during that month to do good without the excuses. The excuses will be on you then. You can't say the shaitan is whispering to me, shaitan la. The shayateen are locked, they're shackled. And then another hadith which is very important, which shows us the importance of the ajr of Ramadan. An Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, man qama Ramadan imanan wa ihtisaban, gufira lahu ma taqadama min dhimbi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in uh, uh, Sahih, Sahih Muslim, in the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, whoever stands during the month of Ramadan, meaning whoever uh, fasts and does their, the, the actions that they have to do in the holy month of Ramadan, benefits from Ramadan, imanin, with full iman about the reward, in, in a full iman of Allah, in, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and expecting the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so they have Iman, they believe in the reward, they believe in Allah, they believe everything the Prophet ﷺ came with, and they look for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah will forgive them for what preceded them in sin, the sins they did before Ramadan. So that between Ramadan and Ramadan, is maghfira, is forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a great time to have that forgiveness. The Prophet sallallahu said in another hadith, a jumwa, a jumwa and a jumwa, wa Ramadan, wa ila Ramadan, wa al-hajj, laysa lahu jizah ila al-jannah, wa kama qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned about that our sins will be forgiven between Jumwas, and that refers to the minor sins, between Ramadan and Ramadan, and of course Hajj, Al Hajj, and accepted Hajj. There's no reward for it except Jannah. So it lets us know it's important that we need to benefit from our Ramadan. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil until the next sitting when we'll talk about some of the adab of Ramadan.